He may be a little old to drive a racing car, but Professor Sid Watkins is an indispensable member of the F1 family. Hi, how are you doing? For nearly 30 years, his friendly smile and easygoing manner have been a reassuring fixture at Grand Prix races around the globe. I didn't know that you realized the importance of this man. Yes, you look, too, up too bloody late, right you see, if I'd had him when I was racing, I would have been put together even faster. Yes. He's the ultimate insider, the man that holds the health and safety of F1 drivers in his hands. When I had my accident, he was not around, and then later he came around. So maybe my ear would have not been falling off if he would have been there. Sid Watkins is the patron saint of safety in Formula One, and the watershed of that has gone right down through other formulas of motor racing. You can have absolute confidence that you have one of the best men in the world available to look after your safety should you need it. From his trackside trauma unit, Sid coordinates the medical care for all F1 personnel, including the 22 drivers on the track. Well, this is the medical center at the circuit. We have a similar medical center at every Grand Prix race. The facilities are those of a modern intensive care unit with uh, specialists staffing the unit. And they have the equipment that one would expect to find in a modern teaching or university hospital or a major trauma center in terms of life support. In the late 60s, the chances of being killed or injured in an accident were one in 10 accidents. And Bernie stepped in to try to help the situation. In some places we turned up and there wouldn't be enough ambulances, enough doctors, no helicopters and so forth. We soon got that situation sorted out and it just went from strength to strength. So that by the end of the 80s, the chances of being injured were one in 300 in accidents, so an enormous improvement in the statistics. Sid and his team are able to get to the scene of accidents on the track thanks to a fleet of specially designed medical cars. Well, this is my mobile office at Grand Prix. It's a very special motor car made by Mercedes. In the back, we have what is basically a resuscitation unit. We carry a box of drugs and other essential equipment. If he's having trouble breathing, we can manually ventilate him with this device. And in the case of burns, we have a burns pack with some special materials to apply immediately to the burned areas. And on the other side, I want to show you some very special equipment which Mercedes fitted as a personal favor to me if you'd like to come round here, there is a glove box here. This is the glove box. And there is a selection of best Havana cigars. And here, the material with which to light them. And down here, the end of the race on Sunday afternoon, a drop of what Innis Island used to call Scottish wine. After nearly three decades on the circuit, he's become one of the most familiar faces in the paddock. He's made a lot of close friends over the years, and sadly lost a few as well. The one driver that I, I got so friendly with, or very, very friendly indeed, I mean, he, he became a member of my family, he was Senna. And so I was hit pretty hard when he had his accident. I was sad that I hadn't insisted more persistently that he shouldn't drive because he'd been so upset after the Ratzenberger accident. But I couldn't talk him out of driving and uh, so I had to accept it, but when I saw him in the cockpit and we got him out and I realized that his head injury was, was going to be a fatal head injury, then I did think maybe I should have tried harder, you know, really stuck it into him. But there, no, I didn't, and so that was one, one of my regrets. But there have been high points too. I suppose the best moment in motor racing I had was 
when I knew that we'd saved Hakkinen's life at Adelaide, when the Australian medical team acted so promptly and performed the tracheotomy on, on Hakkinen at the trackside on the tarmac. And once we got his airway properly established after that, I knew he was going to be okay, and that was really a very good moment. Sid Watkins has created a legacy which I don't think will ever be lost. And we would love to see him go on forever because he's a man of today. He's of mature years, but he's got a very young and agile mind. It's current and it's today, and he's always looking towards tomorrow. I enjoy it very much. I haven't lost any motivation or drive. In fact, it gets reinforced every time I meet Ron Dennis and he calls me wrinkly and asks me when I'm going to retire. Uh, and I say, well, if Ron wants to know, then I've got to go on just to irritate him.